All right, listen up now real quick. Helmet's off. Helmet's off. It's a privilege for what you're doing. Don't forget it. Don't forget it. So make sure you're doing all the right things. Listen to your coaches. Get through it. You're doing a good job. I appreciate your effort, but there's no question we've got to get better and we will. We have been successful where I've been because of the assistant coaches. We, we just haven't had a lot of turnover. Because we've all been together for so long, he knows that we understand what he expects on a day-to-day -day basis. Consistency, consistency, man. Everything we do, everything we do, let's go. Matt Limegrover is our offensive coordinator here. He's been with us now going on 12 years. For us, it's the same. Like I've been telling you since day one. He's done a tremendous job working with Coach Kill for what he wants and putting it in his own ideas and organizing it and making it better. In and out now, in and out, let's go. Show me you want to play, man. We've been very good offensively. We really have. A lot of that goes to his detail and, and, and his organization and then his love for the offensive line because the game's won and lost up front. We're snapping it on s of said hit, not the t of said hit. You understand? Yes, yes, All right, you're doing a good job. Just make sure you anticipate. As a person, He's probably the most intelligent person I've ever been around. Our thing with Coach Limegrove is if we ever got on who wanted to be a millionaire, he would be our phone a friend. I mean, there is no question. He knows more little stuff than anybody I've been around. Limey, my man. You know, he jokes a lot with me about the phone a friend on millionaire, but as far as football goes, he's one of the smartest guys I've ever met. Yes, sir, tight, four squeeze. Tight, four squeeze. I'm a position coach and a coordinator, so you know what happens is, is I've got to kind of split my concentration as far as, okay, I got to be small picture as far as offensive line, but I also got to try and have a wide gaze. Got to be consistent with those snaps. Let's go. In and out of that huddle now, man. In and out of that huddle. But I rely on those other guys uh, to help me with the wide gaze part. Coach Rob Reeves, he's our tight ends coach. To hit. <laughs> Good, good, Larry, good footwork. He's a guy that he loves coaching football. And hey, now, hey, what we talk about stance. He loves working with his guys. Now, that when you got up there, you did this. And they're his guys, and he'll defend them, and I think that's a great quality he has. That's your base, that's your power. He'll make sure that those guys are taken care of, whoever he's coaching. <laughs> One of the funny things about him is we call him the golden child or the chosen one. He played for Coach Kill, played quarterback for him. Something came up about Rob not being able to throw a wet ball when he was in college. And, and to this day, if it's raining outside and we have practice or it's a game day and there's, there's any kind of weather, we said, well, that's a good thing Reeves isn't our quarterback or else we'd have to run the ball every time. Our quarterback coach, Jim Zabrowski, he's the newbie on the staff. He's only been with us a year, but if you came in and observed, you'd think he was uh, with us right from day one. You know, it's interesting how guys are, are willing to, to make sacrifices when you're with Coach Kill. Set, hit, throw late, throw late. Pat Poor, who's coaching our wide receivers now, was our quarterback coach, and Coach Pat Poor was the one who went into to Coach Kill and said, hey, Jim Zabrowski's a guy we need to hire and I know he's a quarterback guy. I'm willing to go coach wide receivers. That's how strongly I feel about Jim being on our staff. It was definitely a, a sacrifice that he made. He knew what we were about. He knew how we did things offensively, and he said, that's, that's the right guy. That told me an awful lot about both Jimmy and then also, also Pat. Get right up on it. Set, hit. Pat's kind of the elder statesman of the offense. Eyes are up. Eyes are up. He's been at a bunch of places. He's seen a bunch of different things, so he kind of provides that experience aspect of it. Coach talks about, hey, you know, coach them the way you would your, your son or daughter. A little higher, a little bit higher, Moses. Brian Anderson, who's now coaching the running backs. Brian's wife's pregnant, and so, you know, he's gonna get that, that idea. Brian's getting ready to get that full force here in another month or so, so he's pretty excited about being a dad. I think the interesting thing is there's been a lot of people that have patted me on the back and said, boy, you made it, you know, you've arrived, this is, you know, this is the big time. And I think that's great, but I don't think of it that way because that part of it isn't, isn't nearly as important as being successful as what I do as an offensive line coach, as an offensive coordinator, and a part of a staff that puts together a football team and helps develop a program that has success on the field, the guys graduate, they go on to be successful as workers in society and parents and, and husbands and, and beyond. It wouldn't matter where I was, that, that's the overriding goal and I think that's how everybody feels about it. Good job, man. Hey.
Great job today, boys. Beast mode on three. One, two, three. Beast mode.